Hey, you're listening to the Speaking of Music podcast. Hey guys, we're back. And today we have an exciting episode ready for you guys. We're going to be talking about Control by SZA. It is about time that we covered our Queen SZA. She's just so gorgeous and iconic. Um, And it's about time that we kind of dove more into R&B type of stuff on this podcast because we talk about how we like to talk we talk about how we like to cover different genres and then we don't (laughs) then we don't yeah all right let's jump right into background info so control is the debut album from SZA and it was released June 9th 2017 and there was a decent amount of singles but the before the album released uh there were two singles drew barrymore and love galore and then after the album released before the deluxe was released there was supermodel the weekend broken clocks and garden and there were 14 original tracks on the original release and there were seven deluxe tracks that were released june 9th 2022 Yes, but this is not her debut album. She has another album called Z, which I don't like as much, and she doesn't either. But um, <laughs> I erased it from existence yeah. on Wikipedia, apparently. Loki. Anyways, all right, let's jump right into rankings. I'll start. So we have Supermodel, Go Gina, Drew Barrymore, The Weeknd, Broken Clocks, Twenty Something, Prom, Garden, Normal Girl, Doves in the Wind. Anything, Pretty Little Birds, Love Galore, and Wavy. Okay, my rankings are Supermodel, Broken Clocks, Drew Barrymore, Go Gina, Prom, 20-something, Garden, The Weeknd, Normal Girl, Doves in the Wind, Anything, Love Galore, Pretty Little Birds, and Wavy. And mine are Broken Clocks, Prom, Supermodel, Drew Barrymore, Anything, Garden, What? <laughs> Just did not read that. Garden. Um, the Weekend, Wavy, Normal Girl, Love Galore, 20 Something, Go Gina, Pretty Little Birds, and Doves in the Wind. Okay, so we can jump right into the first track, which is Supermodel, also my number one. I have been recently listening to a little bit of Frank Ocean, and I like a lot of his stuff, but I feel like yeah. this song was very Frank Ocean esque of her. Um, there was a very similar beat happening there. And I love the crunchy drums at the end. So good. I think that SZA is really good at um, keeping her production consistent with her style. And I love a lot of the production choices she makes. So that's probably why this is first. I definitely, I like this song a lot too. I agree with a lot of what Anusha said. I also, I like the theme. I like the concept of this song. Um, I think, you know... I I basically, I judge songs a lot based on how I feel about them conceptually a lot of the time, which, you know, isn't great. I know that there are songs that don't have to be serious, you know. Yeah. You're like, ha, ah, she's so unserious. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I like when they are and they have like a deeper meaning. So. This is definitely her airing her dirty laundry to the world, for sure. No, it is. I liked the flow of this song and that's how I kind of judged most of these songs on this album like I did it sonically mostly mm-hmm. musically sonically type thing um oh um as someone who doesn't really listen to this type of music or SZA in general <laughs> um I liked that this track was the first track of the album because um it is one of the ones that I personally enjoyed more than some of the album tracks in the middle Mm -hmm. so it it gave me a nice like a good start good start to the album yeah exactly and I this was the first album I'd listened to of hers like most people I guess but this song (laughs) definitely does a good job of introducing you to the idea of who SZA is and what her music is like so yeah overall a really good opening track let's move on to the next song which is Love Galore Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm definitely not a Travis Scott fan. Neither am I. Neither. I did not appreciate these verses of his. Okay, and listen. 
like he doesn't have all bad songs but it's, he's just not really my thing i think he doesn't have a flow that i enjoy as well as like i don't think his lyrics make up or his lack of flow like in my brain you know yeah. like he's he's talented but he's not my thing you know what i mean exactly and some of the production elements in this song specifically were not my favorite um but i do think that some of sizzle's verses really you know stood out in this song and i would go so far as to say even made up for the stuff that i didn't like even so the song is pretty low on my rankings but that's what you get when you get a good album exactly it's kind of just personal preference for me that um i just don't like listening to this type of um don't like listening to these types of lyrics i guess i even though i still like you know, generally enjoyed the sound of the song um i think this one was more rooted in the lyrics for me that made it go down yeah and definitely in i think especially in albums that are outside of our you know quote unquote comfort zone yeah um genre wise they're going to be songs that i'm never going to listen to again and they're going to be songs that i absolutely adore and that's that's fine. true that's like true. that's fine okay so next we have doves in the wind <laughs> so there's a bit of a controversy mm -hmm. a, a bit the Forrest Gump idea was so funny. To me. <laughs> I, loved that I thought that was so yeah. So no, I funny. thought that was you know because I my parents finally let me and my brother watch Forrest Gump. You finally, allowed, you weren't allowed to watch Forrest Gump. Why? <laughs> why do you think? No, literally, why? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> moving past that. No, but now I have watched Forrest Gump and I enjoy all of the Forrest Gump cultural references yeah, now because i we're get that an entire genre of the culture <laughs> no i mean i understood some of them without like watching the movie but obviously it makes more sense once you've seen the movie yeah Big, sweetheart <laughs> but anyways the song was the song was pretty funny but also very empowering i think um i do like more of kendrick stuff than i said before travis's stuff oh my god yeah for sure um so I think that he made a very good compliment to SZA's voice and his verses were good. They were catchy, they were groovy. You know, the song worked. Okay, little thing. Kendrick Lamar deserved every inch of every award he was ever given. Like he does great things, you know, yeah. the Bad Blood remix. <laughs> the Bad Blood remix indeed. Like I'm talking about collab wise, like obviously his music like alone is so good hello Pulitzer queen mm -hmm. like that was that's a big deal and whenever I see him on something it makes me really excited and I actually didn't know about the song I don't know if I was supposed to was I like missing out on something like was it popular I think it was like it had a little TikTok moment but I'm not really sure how far that went oh can't really speak to that but yeah I think it was pretty popular but I guess if you're not kind of connected with her world and stuff like if you don't listen to her music then you wouldn't yeah. really associate a specific song like you probably heard it before you just wouldn't associate it with her yeah Ever. anyways very good very excited oh yeah and i was so excited because you know i listened to this in order so wow you know <laughs> something i didn't like combined with something i did like the questions are all dying to know <laughs> how many wait wait let <laughs> 28 wait i thought that was more only eight from SZA, but 20 from kendrick okay oh, okay, okay. I, the ratio there it's giving louis 28 okay oh, okay <laughs> let's, let's move on let's keep going we're gonna talk about drew barrymore and i love this song so much oh my god me too this is also a fan favorite for sure but it makes sense yeah it does make sense because she talked about her insecurities in a way that isn't too heavy or like dark i think and also the fact that this is the name of the song is very fun <laughs> and fresh as well yeah so sizza why is it so hard to accept that the party is over? <laughs> girl you got school tomorrow get your eyes in the car <laughs> <laughs> i like how this song um like takes it down a notch it's a little less like it's a little different than what what the past few tracks were mm. um 
and I enjoy that variety in the sound as well. Um, I also, um, as Anisha was saying, I, you know, connected with these lyrics a little more than some of the other some of the other <laughs> song lyrics. <laughs> um, so I definitely enjoyed this song. I don't know where I put it on there. It's high. It's high. It's high. But it was really clever yeah. of her to name the song after Drew because she's like kind of this pop culture symbol for like, I think, identity and like also vocalizing insecurities in a way. <laughs> the Drew so, Barrymore show. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a very, it was very clever. No, it's really funny because whenever I see like the Drew Barrymore show, the only thing I can think of is Chloe Feynman's um, impression of the Drew Barrymore show on SNL. It's so funny. That's the only thing I can think of. The only thing I ever think of when I think of SNL is the Sarah Lee skit. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's move on to prom. This is definitely more bordering pop R&B than a lot of her other songs. Yeah, I, um, could, I could definitely tell yeah you know, you know listening sonically yeah also the like muted drums that continue through the whole song do a very good job of portraying her like existential like aging crisis going on here <laughs> no this is also because i accidentally left it on shuffle when i was listening to the album i didn't mm -hmm. click the off shuffle button so this song came like second after supermodel which was the first one so i was I was like, oh, I like this one. But then I had to go back and listen to the other three tracks before before I got back to this one. Yeah, but the chorus is really good. The way she has these like staggered harmonies going on. As I was talking about before, her production choices are all really, really clever. And of course, her pen game is like one of the best in, you know, within the R&B genre. So yeah, the song was strong. I liked how this song had like, shorter like sentences yeah no that makes sense like it was there were a little less words so i think it matched my flow a little better personally you know personally or whatever. you know personally <laughs> okay we're gonna move on to the weekend i got a little concerned because i thought it was a weekend without the e and i was like <laughs> uh oh no. <laughs> but then it was like the regular word weekend, the weekend and I was like okay this was my first SZA song which is like maybe mine too because I heard this like three or three years ago or whatever or like probably old probably uh, before that and I really liked the song it was on a couple of my playlists but this song was also like really big among her fans and this had a TikTok dance I need a you're lying to me. Yeah. And had a TikTok dance. It was a long time. It was 2019. I'm scared of that. But this song is just so good. The hook is really catchy. Yes. And the the verses kind of have an air of sadness in a way. But then the hook and the chorus sound more like free and accepting of the situation. Yeah. Also, I read somewhere that... Well, the song is about like being like being the one that someone else cheats with, right? Yeah. But I read somewhere that this is a more like quote unquote feminist take on it because instead of like making a deal with the guy, she's like talking to the other girl instead. And she's like, I don't know, something like that. But it's giving like, hey girly. Hey girly. <laughs> Just wanted to let you know. <laughs> yeah, it is it, that is what it's giving. But the song is so catchy. Anyways, we're going to move on to Gojina. Gojina. I love the little, like, tingling thing that's happening in the background. I don't even know what that is. But it's, like, very jazzy. Also, in case you didn't know, this references, like, a 90s sitcom. And, like, the, the Gojina part is just, like, stressing how, like, it's, like, self-love. It's, like, how hot she is. Like, that That was the reference. It's, like, called Martin or something, like, the 90s sitcom. But, again, with her pop culture references. And that is so true, girl. <laughs> Maybe you should go and love yourself. That thing sure. is so aggressive. Sure. Why was he so mean to her? He's like, maybe you should go love yourself. Like, yeah, she should. 
<laughs> it was like, you're just... and then Selena's like, she's like, I love me. <laughs> was that her? In what? That song was about Selena for sure, right? The love yourself. Probably. Probably. I don't know. I don't. I was. I mean, I, it has it's to not be. like I was in pop culture when that song released. Like, I was, was not. Like, that was drama. That was big time drama. The whole the whole thing was big time drama. You know, good for their careers though. So it's like really low on my rankings. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you're an anti Victoria. Tell us. Yeah, please it's because I I just didn't. I just didn't like it. Vibe with it. <laughs> you just I just didn't vibe with yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't vibe with it. I didn't. I just. It, again, like I was listening to this album mostly sonically. Um, and I just didn't like the sound of this song. I also am not the biggest fan of the name Gina in general. Whoa, Girl. Gina's a perfectly fine name. Gina's literally fine. <laughs> No, I know, but <laughs> no, but like I know someone named Gina. And... Girl, what like... the hell? You no, can't be saying I... that on this. No, podcast. no, no, no. I like, I Gina like listening to the podcast. You know? What? Gina's gonna find you. I like the Gina. I know. It's just that, you know, when there are like random names or whatever in songs, and I always associate. Girl, with I just the... explained that this is a random. No, I know, but it's like a name in a song, and I. Uh... And I will associate the name with the person I know. And I just... So you don't want Gina to have a self-love anthem? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Literally. That's no, literally I honestly saying. don't think Gina would like this song either. So... <laughs> you know what? I just... I like Gina. Maybe you and Gina both don't have taste. Um, well, here's my little thing. Victoria has no taste when it comes to songs for people because we played her Victoria by Thomas Heaton and she didn't like it. And it was such a good song, too. It was such a good song. It was so cute. But let's be honest, like, I win. I win. The song called Sophia is just so nice. Did it get overplayed? Mm, Mayhaps. Maybe. But, um, <laughs> but I still win. My songs for people play is just gorgeous. You can't say you I don't like too, names and songs. But mine is more organized than yours, so. What the hell? Yeah. Mine is a little more specific than yours. Mine is literally older than yours. Mine is better. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Go away. I need to add Drew Barrymore to my list. Mm, see, that Drew Barrymore doesn't qualify for my songs for people playlist because well, that's not about the person. No, 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 no. Because because in the title, it just has to be their first name. I'm on a first name basis with these girlies. Okay. Sissa keeps them satisfied through the weekend, but we're not going to wait till the weekend for this ad break. Here's one for you right now. I thought we were going to make a Go Gina one. I don't have a Go Gina one. Go Gina, go listen to this ad break. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Do that. It's so bad. No, it's great. If you haven't heard about Anchor, let me tell you about it. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free, and there are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. The best part is that Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast, all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey guys, we're back, and we're going to start with the second half of this album. So, next we have Garden. I like that this was the start of the second half. I enjoyed this song. This song was good. Do I like the part where it says "say it like that" in parentheses? Yeah, I'm not a fan title? of that. But we're just gonna pretend like that doesn't exist. Yeah, you know, sometimes the things in the parentheses, like yeah, in the parentheses, yeah. you can like count some part of the title. Yeah, you can throw that away. It can still be the the non parentheses part in the title. And exactly. it should be fine. I think that like when. I like most of her titles here, and then the parentheses, like, throw me off. Sometimes yeah. the parentheses make more sense. But this like, one just doesn't. <laughs> but this one really doesn't. This one could have just been called Garden. I think that's my little thing. Like, when I was listening to Over the Ocean Call, and then in parentheses, it's Andrew. It makes sense. Because right. Over the Ocean Call is basically, like, one movement of the song, and the second movement is Andrew. That's by Lizzie McAlpine, by the way. Yeah. But then here, there's, like, no. Yeah. It's kind of just, like, words thrown together. <laughs> Yeah, and even um, 
we just did special, right? Mm -hmm. And it was to be loved in parentheses, am I ready? Like that That still makes sense. more sense than this because those two like phrases go together in a like in a line in the song. That one is by Lizzo, by the way. I just said that. Did I not? No, you said special. Oh. Well the special episode was like out like two weeks before this one's fine. You act like our followers like obsessively know when our You act like we have followers in here. <laughs> we have plenty, okay? Our Instagram is gorge. Okay, do they actually listen to our episodes? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. The emojis, no duh. Yeah, the emojis. <laughs> Anyways, I love the ad libs of the song so much. And Sis is really good at ad libs because her voice is just so pretty. But in this song specifically, she like dips into her head voice a lot. And that sounds so good. And I hope she does that more with more of her projects that are coming out. Which, by the way, girl, where's the next album? Give it to us. Give it to us now. Okay, let's move on to Broken Clocks. This is my number I one. just, I knew Victoria would like this one. I had predictions for which one Victoria would like, and it was Broken Clocks and Prom. And you, I, and you were right. And I was right. But I, okay, I thought Prom might have been first, but, like, that could have been a toss-up. Like, could have been Broken Clocks or Prom. But, you know, I was still right. The chorus of this song and I think the overall melody of it are very captivating. And the concept of this song is also really yes, good. Yes, I liked the concept of this song. Um... And I just like the, you know, the imagery of broken clocks. Exactly. It, it paints a nice picture. And I also liked how it, um, like, worked with the sound of the song. Mm -hmm. And also the story she's telling about earlier moments of her life and the way that the chorus kind of interjects and breaks up these, you know, stories that she's telling, it feels like, like, almost like, she's like stopping time mm -hmm. in those stories if that makes sense which that is so clever of her yeah <laughs> these yeah. guys um actually okay i do have something to say then say it it's say literally number two say. on your ranking so far. yeah because it's good <laughs> slay what you want to slay girl and i went last so slay what you want to okay, say okay okay say what you want to say I thought the title was really interesting and um I really like the lyric in the chorus all I got is these broken clocks I ain't got no time and it's like I thought it was a very interesting take because obviously like a, like even if you don't have a like if you have a clock like there's still time going around in this exactly. world but I feel like time is very like objective but the way you feel about how it passes passes is very subjective like I have the worst sense of like relation to time like something could have happened to me yesterday and I'd be like oh like last week yeah Sizzle has a lot of these like existential crises throughout think, this album no, I think time is so funny like how is it September right now yes that's, that's what I'm saying it makes me want to no cry. every time like a new month turns around I'm like and then I look back in the past month, I'm like, was that like 30 days? Was that four weeks? Or like, was that longer? Was that shorter? And I can't tell. Exactly. And that's why I like, I really liked the idea of the song and I liked the title and I liked the way she put it together in the chorus and the post-chorus. And it got me really excited. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow. Okay. Let's move on to anything, which, okay. The song definitely should be called Anywhere. I why, agree. Why I got, isn't it called No, because I was listening to the song and then I looked back at the title to like put it in the rankings and I was like, wait, that's not right. Not sure. I wish it was called Anywhere because then I could add it to my Twins playlist with Passengers Anywhere, which is one of my favorite songs. But why is it called anything? Mm -hmm. I actually don't know that one. <laughs> see what Genius says. What does Genius have to say? It doesn't say anything. It just says it samples a Donna Summer song. I only knew about Gogina because I googled it because I was curious. No, oh, Genius could have also told you that. A Gogina? Yeah. Oh, I, no, I read that off of Genius, like, when I Googled it. Oh. I didn't look at it now. Okay. The flow of this one is broken up a little bit more, I think, as opposed to her other songs, where she keeps a pretty smooth flow. And I liked it. It was definitely more of a switch up, you know, we're kind of nearing the end, but we're still towards, like, the middle section of the album. So it's, it's good how she's changing things up in terms of you know the song structure 
I like I like the tempo switch. Yeah, I like the outro. Sometimes mm-hmm. I don't like repetition, but I really liked this outro. Yeah, I liked the um. I, I like I like how we all started our sentence with I liked. I liked. I liked because yeah, the song is good. I liked. I liked the um. Kind of what Anisha was saying, like the slower and then obviously less words type of thing. I didn't really know where I wanted this one to go on my rankings. Mm-hmm. And I kind of just Neither like put I. it there yeah. and then it just ended up where it ended up. Yeah, it's kind of low, but I really, really liked this song. I feel like it's kind of hard to rank this album. It is. It's kind of hard because also my feelings towards a lot of these songs change. Like I remember listening to this back in like, you know, January or something and I had a whole phase where I had listened to this album a lot and then I kind of got back into it recently, obviously, for this episode. And a lot of my feelings towards these songs have changed. So that's just... That is interesting. I feel like my like opinions will change with this album over time mm-hmm. because like I've never listened to it as a whole. I've always just listened to like the songs as they came up, you know, <laughs> like as they would like trend, mm-hmm. which is bad of me. I've always been meaning to like look at things more holistically um especially with artists that I see are popular I like to take a look at their you know albums and how they feel because obviously that's very personal to the artist and putting together an album is a very difficult process um but I just never listened to it as a whole and I really liked that I did but I'm sure that like with time that will change how I feel about it okay with that let's move on to wavy which is Consider the interlude of this album. Which is strange because of where it's placed. You not know? only that, and also the fact that it has a feature. Yeah. Like, that was really interesting to me. The song was honestly not my favorite of the album. Um, well, clearly. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, I just don't think the feature added a lot, and I didn't really like how he sounded. Um, but I like the melody of the beginning part of it a lot. That was That was nice. It doesn't even have a song bio on Genius. Like, there's not much going on here. I like the easy bake, easy wake oven. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the song. I clearly liked it more, I guess. I just, I think, enjoyed it sonically. I think the reason why it's not last on my rankings, like for Sophia and Danusha, is just that I didn't have many issues with it. So... It kind of just, I kind of did the same thing with anything where I put it, like, there. And then I just put songs around it. And then that's where it ended up. I do that a lot. Like, I'm like, oh, did I like this song more, or like, better or worse than this other song? Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's kind of how I formulate the rankings. And then I switch them around. I see it as, like, a whole, and I'm like, oh, no. No, that's yeah, not yeah. right. No, that's not right. right. And yeah. then you, you do it singly, and then you look at the list, and you're like, how did how did it end up like that? How did we end up? No. Okay, we're gonna move on to normal girl. This one is so sad. Yeah. Like, Oops. The whole idea of this song is really upsetting. I think, but I really like the drums. <laughs> I really do. She makes use of drums a lot in this album, and she does it really well in a way that. I think accentuates her voice instead of drowning it out. But one of my favorite lyrics is wish I was the type of girl you take over to mama. That's a good lyric. Even though that was so sad. Like being able to say like, oh, I wish you took me to meet your family. I wish this was, it's just a good way of saying, I wish this was more serious, you know? I didn't love this song. Right. I kind of just didn't like the repetition of the phrase normal girl. She's not like other girls. Yeah. No, but the point is that she wants to be. Yeah, I I know that. (laughs) Yeah, you didn't like it apparently. I don't know. Maybe it's just the word girl. I have an aversion to the word girl. Look the same. Um, I was thinking about this the other day. I was listening to Funeral by Maisie Peters and James Bay. And it is such a good song. Such a good song. But James, his first verse, it's like, I know it's not how you planned it, but it's the worst thing in the world. And then he rhymes world with girl. But the way it sounds is so bad. He's like, I know you're afraid that I'm going to let you down again, but I wouldn't. 
girl. <laughs> and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> But then the chorus comes and it's like, I want you to want me when you're dead to roll in your grave like we're not done yet to call. Oh, my God. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I love that. Before this gets any more out of hand, we're going to move on to Pretty Little Birds. Not going to lie, the feature did not add much again. I agree. I think that when SZA picks her features, like, half of them are absolute bangers. And then the other half of them, they're not bad, but they just don't add anything to her yeah, they're kind of just song. there. Just there, like she could have done without. And her voice is so beautiful, and she can carry a song so well on her own that I feel like, you know, yeah, the song just didn't need. I mean, I understand. I maybe it's fine. I think maybe it's like okay, like half these banger features like couldn't have been done without, and then half the time they're like okay, like this is a god, she's untouched, like nobody can touch her. Yeah, like, look at her feature. Exactly. I think that uh, it makes sense the number of features she picked on this album to kind of like get the. A, a different voice right mm-hmm. within the rest of her songs um and you know i also think it's you know 14 tracks is a very standard album length um yeah i think that she could have removed like one feature Probably. and it would have been like still a good like I think she has a lot range of, features, of it but i think for the genre like it yeah. makes sense. Collaboration is more popular in the genres outside of pop. Exactly. That's true. You know, like, mo- a lot of pop albums just have no features. Yeah. My Queen Louie. <laughs> we, we definitely have to keep that in mind when we listen to albums outside of our normal genres. That, like, not everything is going to be the same as pop and, you know, whatever other genres we're used to and we listen to. It's not going to be the same. So we have Latin to keep that rock. in mind. <laughs> Yeah, sure. From like the seventies too. <laughs> sure, Latin rock. Okay, so back to this song. Um, I liked the verses. I didn't really like the chorus. Yeah. But the verses, I liked the the phoenix. Mm-hmm. Um, because I just like phoenix. Like when I, whenever someone mentions like the bird phoenix, not the city phoenix, not the city phoenix guys, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> the <laughs> bird. <laughs> Um, but when it gets to the chorus and it's kind of just like pretty little bird, and then it's like, and then she says, You've hit the window a few times, you're a pretty little bird. I don't know, I just didn't feel very attached to the whole bird storyline at that point. (laughs) Furry, (laughs) okay. Wait, why don't you like Phoenix the City? You're really revisiting that right now? Yeah. <laughs> because Arizona. Don't tell it to Sydney Bird, Queen. <laughs> Don't tell that to Jane. That's a good Um And this is the one I'm used to. The tattoos. She's never been to Arizona, I don't think, Ella. <laughs> um, How do you know that? How would you know that? So Maybe she's been there and she didn't tell, personally tell you. I feel like she hasn't been like what? Like, I think... Actually, maybe she went on vacation or something. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She named it that because of the vibes. And also, like, like young friend is Canadian. Like, what is he doing? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. I also think the song could have been shortened. Like, yeah, I agree. Anything anything over, like, you know, anything over, I guess, four minutes is considered in the longish territory for a song. Um, And I... I don't mind songs that are over four minutes, but this one in particular just didn't need that much substance. Like, I, ju- I just think that if it's four minutes, there just needs to be like like more verses or something longer long. verses, mm-hmm. something like that, and not a chorus that just says Pretty Little Bird a lot. Yeah. Okay, and with that, we are going to wrap up this episode with the final track, which is 20-something. I think the title right off the bat, like it's interesting the way it's formatted as the number 20, like two zero, and then the word something, you know, yeah, instead of like, you know, 20 something, like the fully in words or like, yeah. This song used to be my number one for so long. Really? Yeah, I've, I really love this song. And again, with her existential aging crisis, um, this song is, has just so many strong elements to it. First of all, I mean, I've been, you know, poking fun at the aging crises she has throughout this album, but I really like the way she talks about <laughs> getting older. 
I, I do. I love the way that she puts that into words. And her pen game is really, really good. Um, and again, here, the hook is just perfection. And also, I think that the way that the production is so minimal in this song puts a spotlight on her voice really well. Wait, she's 31? Yeah. Oh, shit. But when she was, like, in 20-something, <laughs> that song was helping. Well, I know that. But I, didn't um, realize. I, I liked the sound of this song, and I liked the concept of it. And But, I don't know, the word something, I guess, or, like, the repetition of the word something in the chorus was not something I wanted to what? listen to. Something that you makes me feel like a dangerous woman? What the hell? Something big, I feel it happening out of my control. <laughs> <laughs> something in the way by Nirvana? Come on, girl. Do you better. ruined Nirvana. <laughs> you ruined Nirvana. I think there's a reason why I don't really listen to this type of music. It's just not... You don't have to... It's yeah, just basically. It's just not something I enjoy listening to. Like Ooh, I'd tomato, rather there tomato, be tomato. I'd rather there be more words. Tomato, tomato, tomato. Tomato. Boo. I thought literally early in this episode you were like, I like how the song doesn't have as many words. No, I know, but I just no, like, she knows she's eating her words. When I'm judging these types of songs, I like when it's you know like concise and in in its like sonically space or however you want to say it i just mean i just mean i like choruses that have i just would rather not listen to choruses that are mainly based on one phrase repeated but again that's me i have very okay, personal my issues okay i wouldn't have an issue with that but you have so many exceptions to that yeah like you I have so many on. exceptions you have so many exceptions to that, I swear. Me when you're the only one I can come up with is breathe in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that that <laughs> anyway. No, that that was different though, because I just there was this one point in time when I was twelve and also I in the course of needy, she song. says needy like six times in each chorus. I feel the needy. Way too the needy. Okay, technically the last one is me did. did. Okay. <laughs> okay shut up. No, I also so, did have an issue with bat, that. Bat, so. bat, bat. Okay, so while Victoria's being a hater, we're going to tell you it's that she's wild. wrong. No, I, I also didn't like the chorus of Big Smile. I like Big Smile for the person. All right. <laughs> Thank you. So, sh- shut up. So, Victoria's a hater um, in conclusion, and Anusha and I are right. This album is so good. <laughs> we are, I'm so glad we finally talked about it on this podcast. Yeah, I've been pushing for this album for such a long time. I'm so happy that we finally got around to talking about it. Because, you know, I surprised myself by liking this album. And I love SZA. And I will forever stand her. I love that woman so much. And with that, if you have any other albums that you think we should cover on this podcast, feel free to let us know. Our Instagram is at this. Oh, wow. Sorry, 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 sorry. I got confused. Okay, so if you get confused a lot, guys. Okay, if there's any other albums you'd like us to cover, please let us know. Our Instagram is at Speaking of Music Podcast. And our TikTok is at Speaking Music Podcast. So make sure to go follow both of those for all the latest updates. And as always, we'll see you next week. Bye! Bye. That was a musty bye. Yeah, it was.